The CTC is hosting a college night. We'll have the details ahead. On the broadcast, we'll also have Fort Osage High School and district news and announcements, as well as this week's sports recap. All this and more coming up on KFOI Weekly News. everyone, thank you for joining us on Comcast Channel 15 and AT&T UVerse Channel 99. I'm Velocity Nichols. And I'm Amate Butte. And here are this week's news, upcoming events, and announcements for the Fort Osage School District. The Career and Technology Center is hosting a college fair on October 27th from 4.30 to 6.30 p.m. Participating colleges and universities, trade and technical schools will be in attendance, including Graceland University, KC Electrical, JATC, Blue River Community College, Missouri Western University, Park University, Oklahoma State University Institute of Technology, Rockhurst University, Military Branches, and more. Don't forget to mark your calendars for no November 1st and get ready for a boot scootin' good time at the first Red Barn Bash, a boots and blue jeans benefit for the FORCE, or Fort Osage Education Foundation. Entertainment will be provided by Fort Osage alum and country music artist No Palma. Go to www.force-foundation.org for complete details. Help support the Fort Osage Food Service Department at McTeacher Night on Tuesday, October 28th from 4 to 8 p.m. at the I-70 and 7 Highway McDonald's in Blue Springs. Parents of students with special needs of all ages are invited to attend the district's first Families and Communities Together, or FACT, night on October 28th at 5.30 p.m. at the high school. There will be a short session with Jane St. John from Missouri Family to Family at UMKC Institute for Human Development. There will be some activities for families to set goals and learn about supports in our community with individuals with special needs. The next Project Grad meeting is November 10th at 6.30 p.m. in the High School Media Center. Come join them to help plan the 2015 After Graduation Party. Project Grad will be selling lanyards, pom-poms, decals, keychains, and much more at many of the high school's sporting events. Please stop by their tables and help support Project Grad as it prepares for a safe and fun post-graduation celebration for Fort Osage students. KFOI is now broadcasting live events on the NFHS network online. Live sporting events are pay-per-view with free viewing after 72 hours. Viewers can go to nfhsnetwork.com and search for Fort Osage High School. Click on the subscribe link under the support this school heading for more ordering information. A portion of the proceeds goes to the activities fund to help benefit Fort Osage students. Thank you in advance for your support. The high school will be participating in the Celebrate My Drive campaign again this year. Beginning today, you can go to www.celebratemydrive.com forward slash home and make a commitment for yourself and our school. Fort Osage could win $100,000 and an amazing concert from the band Perry. Invite your friends and family to join us. Anyone age 14 and up can participate. Stop by the Stuco table at lunch and vote on an iPad with all your available email addresses from today until October 24th. The Indian speech and debate team competed in their first full tournament of the season at Blue Springs High School. Sydney Martin led the Indians by placing second in poetry and fifth in storytelling. Riley Messer finished fourth in Lincoln Douglas debate and Nate Holthy and Kobe Berg took fourth in policy debate. Holthy placed sixth, sixth in congressional debate Chris Nix broke into a sem the semi-final round of dramatic interpretation. The high school's chapter of the National Art Honor Society is participating in Project Pere Noel. For $5, you can purchase a pair of custom-painted shoes for yourself, a friend, or a student in need. Shoes will be filled with candy and delivered prior to the holiday break in December. Go to the district website at fortosage.net and select the district drop-down menu. Click on the news on the Go link. Find the Parade Noel announcement and click on the link to find the order form. 
The Red and White Brigade Marching Band had a great weekend at the Lee Summit North competition. The students brought home honors for outstanding field percussion, outstanding visual performance, outstanding music performance, and outstanding general effect. They also placed first in the Black Division and seventh overall. The Varsity Scholar Bowl A and B teams began the season last Saturday in Hallsville. The A team won the consolation bracket two, going 4-0 after finishing 1-4 in pool play. Ethan Morrow led the team with 250 points on the day. The B team had a tougher go of it, going 0-5 in pool play and 2-2 two and two in bracket play. Colin Turnham led the team with 145 points on the day. The competitive cheerleading team finished ninth in their division out of 20 teams in the state cheerleading invite at Columbia recently. In addition, Kendra Kimmerlink, Kendall, Kendall Smith, and Allison Stevens were named the All-State teams. Congratulations, Indians. We'll have this past week's sports report after this message from our sponsor. There is no better place than Lunar Bowl for your kid's birthday party. Lunar Bowl has youth birthday party options for as low as $99.95 for a party of six, including two hours of bowling, an arcade card, ice cream, soda, and a lot more. Lunar Bowl can also customize birthday events for adults. Lunar Bowl, 2001 Northwest 7 Highway in Blue Springs. To book your birthday party, call group sales manager Tina Short at 816-220-7722. That's 220-7722. On the web at LunarBowl.com. Lunar Bowl is a smoke-free facility. Caleb Winslow, KFY Sports. Varsity football team had its hands full with Liberty North October 10th, but came away with a 17-10 victory to clinch a share of the Suburban Middle 7 Conference title. With one game left to go. It was a tight game, but Skylar Thompson scored the game winner in the third with a five-yard quarterback keeper, and Keegan Lamering extended the lead to 10 with his third field goal of the season. The defense came up big, and Brennan Garrett was able to intercept a deflected Brian Sharp pass with 2.04 left in the game. The Indians were able to run out the clock to move to 8-0 on the season. The C football team lost 16-6 to Truman on Wednesday, October 15th. The varsity volleyball team visited William Christman Tuesday, October 14th and came up short 22-25 to and 20-25. to Jenna Kimbrell led the team with four kills and Maggie Hopkins and Rochelle Harris each had three. The JV team beat the Bears in three sets 25-11, to 20-25, to and 25-11. to The varsity hosted Liberty North for Pink Out Week and lost to the Eagles 26-28. to and 12 to 25. Jenna Kimbrell and Rochelle Harris led the Indians in kills. The team begins district play next week. I'll be right back after these messages from the MFHS network. It's hard to get to everything we have going on here. I mean, this high school has so much. And now you're offering the ability to watch those events without having to travel there. My dad travels a lot, so he likes to watch the events. Like if I'm playing a volleyball game and he can't make it, um, he'll watch it and he loves it. I think it was homecoming, it was Friday night, and um, it was a punt return, and I returned it all the way back for a touchdown. And then, of course, I showed all my family members, and they, they really liked it. They, they liked to see what their family members can do. Golden Lions. I think this broadcast is essential because uh, uh, our team is global, and we got people all over the world going to watch the game. So without this, there's no way they can do that. These kids and these players feel loved. They feel important. And by broadcasting it, you have a bigger group that you're reaching that allows them to know those kids. The Boys and Girls Varsity Crest Country Runners hosted the Suburban Middle 7 Conference Meet October 14th at Osage Trail Middle School. The Girls Varsity team was led by Kaylee Dallas, our 8th place finish in the 5K course. The boys were led by Eli Copeland's 22nd place finish. In a torrential downpour, the boys varsity soccer team lost to a tough Raytown team by a score of 3 to nothing. After conceding three early goals, the Indians settled down and competed much better in the second half. But credit goes to a good Raytown team for the win. The JV lost 1 to nothing to the Blue Jays. 
Then the teams hosted Stanley last night and played the Falcons tight until con conceding three late goals to lose three to nothing. Goalkeeper Hayden Baumgartner was maintaining the shutout when an injury forced him to leave the game in the 74th minute. The JV team defeated the Falcons two to one. Jackson Rexford and Jamie Marufo scored in the Indian goals. Then the boys traveled over to North Kansas City to take on Oak Park October 16th. The boy, the Indians struggled against a good North Town, the Northmen team, losing six to nothing. The JV lost two to nothing. KFY is proud to name senior cheerleader Kandra Camerlink as athlete of the week. Kandra was nominated by her coach Shirley Schwab for leading the team to a ninth place finish and making the All-State cheer squad. Kandra's favorite class is the Health Sciences class at the CTC, and she maintains a 3.43 GPA. Congratulations, Kandra. Coming up on the Indian sports calendar for Monday, October 20th, the JV football team plays at Raytown at 5 p.m. The boys' C JV and varsity soccer teams host Raytown. The C team match starts at 4, JV play at 5, and the varsity kickoff at 6.30 p.m. Come out and sport your Indians. Finally on this week's show, the cross-country teams competed in the conference meet October 14th, and it was the last meet for both the boys' and girls' JV teams. Nothing unusual about that. However, sophomore girls runner Allison Shoemaker received a little extra support from her teammates and who, all who attended. Although Shoemaker finished last and 13 minutes after the next closest runner, she finished with her teammates running beside her and the crowd cheering as she sprinted the last 50 yards to complete the race, as she always does with determination. That showed what it means to do things a little bit better here at Fort Osage. What a great day to be an Indian. If you have Fort Osage news and information you would like to share on KFOI Weekly News, please let us know. Contact Broadcasting Advisor Benjamin Marithew at bmarithew at fortosage.net or Fort Osage District PR Director Stephanie Smith at smith at fortosage.net. Well, that's all we have for you this week. Have a great day and a fantastic weekend. Thanks for watching KFOI Weekly News on Comcast Channel 15 and AT&T Channel 99. We'll see you next time.